Another nice feature in After Effects CS 5.5 is greatly improved 3D camera depth of field blur. If you happen to have Creating Motion Graphics for CS5, I'm in the example project for chapter 14 on cameras. I've opened up the comp 04C, which was about auto orientation, but the important thing is it had a series of layers in 3D space at different distances from the camera, and the camera flies through them. Now, After Effects has long had a depth of field effect. I'll double click the camera to open up its settings, and you'll see it has a checkbox, Enable Depth of Field. The problems were, this was slow to render, and the quality was frankly terrible. That's why not a lot of people use it or weren't very enthused about using it. Well, it's much better now in 5.5. Click OK to leave there, and with the camera selected, I'll type AA to reveal the 3D specific parameters for the camera. And there it is again, Depth of Field. I'll turn it on. Now initially, you may not see a change in the composition panel. It won't seem to render much differently. If this is the case, your layers may be too crowded together to create a depth of field given your current settings. Well, you can rearrange your layers, or you can increase your aperture size, which will in essence give you a more shallow depth of field. And as I do so, you'll now see the nearby and far away planets get out of focus, while planets at an intermediate distance are in focus. How do you determine what is in focus? Well, when you have a depth of field enabled, there is this additional plane drawn for the camera that shows the focal plane, what will be in focus. As I scrub the focus distance parameter here in the timeline panel, watch what happens to that pink plane on the left, and then watch what happens with the way the planet is rendered on the right. As I scrub the focus distance out, you'll see that intermediate planet at the bottom becomes in focus, and now it will go out of focus as I push my focal plane out to the next planet in line that copper sphere, and now it's in focus, and the other ones are out of focus. Or I can go the other extreme. I can go ahead and bring the focus distance way down and focus just on this nearby planet, that big gray and red one. As a matter of fact, my depth of field is so shallow now with this high aperture setting, you can actually see me rake the depth of field across that angled planet, which in itself is a very cool realistic effect. That focus distance is linked to the camera, as I scrub the camera through time, you'll see layers come in focus, then go out of focus until we get close to another planet, like that one right there. I'll back up to where we see more planets, and I'll push the focal plane out to where something like this copper one is in focus. There we go. Now, as I mentioned, one of the reasons we did not use depth of field very often in the past is it didn't have a very attractive blur. It has this kind of squarish pattern. Well, that's the default fast rectangle shape, which is similar to what prior versions of After Effects had. But now you have a lot more options for your iris shape. For example, if I just go to the new square compared to fast rectangle, that alone is already a big improvement. And you'll see it has a nice diamond shaped pattern. I can rotate that diamond with the iris rotation to make it a bit more square. There it renders up, or undo to get back to that diamond shape. And I have other parameters like roundness, aspect ratio, diffraction, etc. These become a lot more evident when you have very small specific specular highlights or point sources of light. And that's something I'll explore in more detail in a later movie on the camera lens blur effect. But even on just big general surfaces like this, you'll see a difference in the different iris shapes. As I go to more sides of my iris, you'll see the pattern gets to be more complex. Or I can go down to triangle to simulate a really cheap camera and becomes much more simple and a less convincing blur. I'll go up to the common hexagon for now. Another nice set of parameters are highlight gain, threshold, and saturation. This allows you to treat the highlights on layers, ones that are above a certain threshold value, differently than the rest of the image. Now initially, you may go ahead and start cranking the gain and say, well, nothing's happening. This parameter doesn't mean anything. That's because your threshold is too high. In an 8-bit project, 255 says only take the absolute highest value and blow that out. Well, that's not very interesting. But if you start to lower this a little bit, you'll now see more parts of these layers become blown out, controlled by the highlight gain. I'll pull it down, crank it back up again. And the threshold determines what brightness levels are affected. Highlight saturation is a subtle but nice little effect that says, do you want me to try to retain any color in those highlights? I tend to like saturated colors, so I like this parameter increased, and it just allows me to keep a little bit more color in some of these blown out areas 
compared to setting it to zero. Subtle, but another nice little improvement.